In part one of this presentation, we started to investigate the three inverse Laplace transforms shown here, with squares in the denominator. Do you remember how it went? I won't go into great detail, but we looked at the transforms with no square in the denominator, and we reminded ourselves of the results from the tables. This involves sine at and cos at. We then went on and reminded ourselves also about the result where you multiply f of t by t, and that has the effect of differentiating with respect to s with a negative sign. We wrote the inverse transform version of that relation and called it number 3. We then went on to use the quotient rule and a little bit of trickery, and eventually we were able to come up with a result for the second of the transforms here. So let's tick that one off. It's been done. Here we're going to finish the job by looking at the other two. When we did the first one, do you remember that we started with differentiating 1 over s squared plus a squared. This time I'm going to put an s on top. We still need the quotient rule. We still get the square of the denominator. And on top, the rule tells us s squared plus a squared, then differentiate s to get 1 and subtract s, the numerator, and differentiate the denominator. That gives 2s. This expression simplifies. Can you see there's s squared minus 2s squared altogether? So that gives us a squared minus s squared over s squared plus a squared, all squared. That's got the right denominator. It's got a constant and an s squared on top. Now we'd like those separate, really. Remember, we were looking for 1 over the square and s squared over the square. At the moment, they're mixed up together. We need to do something about that. Here's how it goes. Let's take the a squared and turn it into 2a squared. Keep the denominator the same. But now 2a squared is wrong. We need to subtract one of those a squareds and we still need to subtract the s squared, but that can now have a plus when we put it in the brackets. We can now break that term up into two pieces. One with the 2a squared, and the other one with a squared plus s squared on top, and its square on the bottom. But can you see now that there's some cancellation in that second term? It's 2a squared over s squared plus a squared all squared minus 1 over s squared plus a squared. That's nice. That second term is easy to take the transform of. In fact, it's just one of our results, number 1, from above. Okay. On the other hand, the first term here on the right-hand side is a constant over the square that we're interested in. So let's isolate that. 2a squared over s squared plus a squared all squared must be, now where did this come from remember, it was d by ds over, of s over s squared plus a squared. And if we're isolating the term on the left, the second term here has to go across to the other side and becomes a plus. OK, so now let's apply inverse transforms to both sides. We're nearly there. Now, I would really like to see a minus d by ds here, wouldn't I? So let's put it in, and then let's fix that up somewhere else. It's wrong as it stands at the moment. We need to put an extra minus on to correct it. And then there's still that second term, but we're not scared of that one. So there we are. So now let's do the inverse transforms. The first one has a negative on it. It has minus d by ds, so that will be t. And then we need the inverse transform now just of s over s squared plus a squared. The second one Let's just write it out for the moment. But now we just have to go back and remind ourselves of results 1 and 2. 
1 over s squared plus a squared gives 1 over a sine a t. s over s squared plus a squared gives cos a t. So both those results come into play. And so we end up with minus t cos a t plus 1 over a sine a t. Now all we have to do to get the result we really want is to divide by 2a squared both sides and that gives us inverse transform. Now 2a squared is gone from the top and it's just become a 1. And we get 1 over 2a cubed sine a t minus t over 2a squared cos a t. And there's our second result. I do need a bracket around that, of course. OK, let's go back and tick that one off. There it was. That's that one. Now, the last one has s squared on top. This is actually easier. We can use the two results we've already got. So we write s squared over s squared plus a squared all squared and we add and subtract an a squared. We now break those into two pieces. One part which will allow a cancellation and the other part which we can take the transform of. OK, so that simplifies to 1 over s squared plus a squared minus a squared over s squared plus a squared all squared. So finally the inverse transform of s squared over s squared plus a squared all squared is the inverse transform of 1 over s squared plus a squared minus a squared times the inverse transform 1 over s squared plus a squared all squared. And now we simply import the results. First of all, the first one is just the 1 over a sine a t, isn't it? And then we get minus a squared. And the inverse transform that we've just worked out previously is this one here. And there's two bits to it. 1 over 2a cubed sine a t. And the other bit was minus t over 2a squared cos a t. And that bears a little bit of simplification. In fact, we get 1 over a and 1 over 2a for the sine. And it's minus, so that will be altogether 1 over 2a sine a t. And in the cos term, the a squareds cancel, and we get plus t over 2 cos a t. And that concludes my work on finding this transform. And so now we can go back and tick off the last one. OK, that concludes the presentation.